welcome to this webinar on anterior segment OCT. I'm Dr. Julie Rodman. In this webinar, I'm going to discuss how you can maximally utilize your OCT in the assessment of the cornea and anterior chamber angle. This slide shows you what the normal cornea should look like on OCT. The most superficial surface is the epithelium, followed by the corneal stroma, with the most posterior feature being the corneal endothelium. The OCT can be extremely useful in identifying corneal dystrophies as the OCT will delineate the layer of cornea involved. Let's look at a few of the epithelial, sub-epithelial dystrophies. The first is MAP dot. MAP dot can take on multiple appearances, including diffuse gray patches or maps, large or tiny cysts or dots, or fine refractile lines or fingerprints. Each of these findings will be localized to the corneal epithelium or subepithelial space. On OCT, you can see the irregular findings in the subepithelial tissue. In this case, you can see hyporeflective areas correlating to a cystic form of MAP dot. The next dystrophy in this category is Reese Buckler. Clinically, Reese Buckler appears as subepithelial gray reticular opacities in the corneal subepithelial or epithelial space. It resembles the appearance of Czech's cereal. On OCT, you can see a dense hyperreflective material at the level of Bowman's that can spread up to the epithelium. Let's switch over to the corneal stromal dystrophies. The first is granular dystrophy. Granular dystrophy appears as white anterior stromal opacities in the central cornea which are separated by clear intervening spaces. The corneal periphery is spared. OCT will show hyperreflective spots in the corneal stroma, Bowman's, and epithelium, and can lead to a partial disruption in Bowman's. Next is lattice dystrophy. Lattice appears clinically as refractile branching lines, white subepithelial dots, and can lead to eventual scarring of the corneal stroma centrally. On OCT, you can clearly see the linear hyperreflective lines correlating with this dystrophy. Next, we have macular dystrophy, another stromal dystrophy. Macular dystrophy appears as gray-white stromal opacities with poorly defined edges extending from limbus to limbus with cloudy intervening spaces. OCT will show clearly defined, separated, hyperreflective foci in the central cornea with generalized hyperreflectivity of the central cornea. The last stromal dystrophy that I will discuss is central crystalline dystrophy of Schneider. This appears clinically as fine yellow-white anterior stromal crystals located in the central cornea. On OCT, you will see dense hyperreflective tissue more visible in the anterior stroma with the epithelium and Bowman's membrane being spared. Last, we have the endothelial dystrophies. The first is Fuchs. Fuchs will appear with corneal guttata and central stromal edema. On OCT, you will see nodular formations of the posterior corneal endothelium, endothelial guttata, and increased corneal thickness. The other common endothelial dystrophy is posterior polymorphous dystrophy, which appears as vesicles arranged in a linear or grouped fashion with a grayish haze and broad bands on the corneal endothelium. OCT will show a thickened hyperreflective material on the corneal endothelium with extension into the anterior chamber. Let's switch over now to the anterior chamber angle. OCT can be extremely useful in assessing the anterior chamber and can provide supplementary information on this very important structure. Let's review the anatomy of the angle. Here I have delineated the important points of reference. You can see the cornea, you can see the iris. The angle is the area spanning between the cornea and the iris. Here's your anterior chamber and Schwalbe's line, or the most posterior portion of the corneal anatomy. This slide shows you what a normal anterior chamber angle should look like. You can use the calipers on the OCT to measure the angle. This angle is wide open. You can see that we put our calipers on the most posterior edge of the cornea and the most anterior part of the angle here, which is your ciliary body band, and this would be the measurement of the corneal angle. 
On this slide, you can see what a narrow angle looks like on OCT. You can see the anterior placement of the ciliary body in apposition to the cornea. You can see that the angle here is completely closed off as we're not able to put calipers in here to measure the distance between these two structures. I hope that you found this webinar useful on how you can maximally utilize your OCT in the assessment of various anterior chamber structures, including the cornea. I look forward to seeing you at future webinars.